Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, in John 8, 4, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is part four of uh, UFOs and Aliens or Fallen Angel Tech, part four. This is going to be on the pyramids. Now, everybody knows that when you start talking about pyramids, they, they, they think about Egypt, you know, the great pyramids of Giza. But did you know that there is a pyramid in China that is twice as high as the pyramid in Egypt? There's pyramids all over the world. Uh, there's pyramids in uh, at least one pyramid in Romania, which is in Eastern Europe. There are pyramids all over the place in South America, uh, Mexico, uh, Colombia, from what I understand, Peru. Um, I mean, they're all over South America. The they're they're even in the United States, but they're 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 uh, uh, earth mounds. They're not stone. And if you want to look up something really interesting. Look up Baalbek, B-A-A-L-B-E-K, I think it is. It's in Lebanon. They've got stones, quarried stones, solid pieces of rock carved out, and it's rectangular. And these stones are huge and heavy. Matter of fact, we don't have any kind of crane that could pick these things up. We have nothing. These things are twice to three times the size of the Titanic or the Queen Mary cruise, uh, cruise ship. Um, I think they're even t twice as heavy as, well, maybe not twice, but they're heavier than our largest aircraft carriers. I mean, you're talking a ship that's over a thousand foot long or around a thousand feet long. I mean, it weighs more than that. It's a solid piece of rock. And when you go and look at it, it's like six foot off the ground on a wall. I mean, who cut this thing? Who quarried it? A quarry is just a place where they take rocks and cut them and, you know, uh, like you would a brick. But, I mean, you're talking a brick that probably weighs... 100,000 tons. I, I don't know if that's exactly what it weighs, but we don't have any cranes that could pick this thing up. And yet they quarried this thing, moved it, and then placed it on a, a wall that's six foot, uh, six foot off the ground. Who did this? I mean, did ancient man do this with, uh, you know, uh, 100,000? Even if you had 100,000 people. I mean... <laughs> You're going to have 100,000 people pick pick up the stone and, and move it? I mean, what kind of technology was involved? I mean, look at the Great Pyramid in Giza. I mean, when you start looking carefully into this, you kind of wonder, who built this thing? I, I, I don't think, personally, I just don't see how ancient man could have done this. Personally, I... You know, uh, when you go to the History Channel, they'll have a special on ancient aliens. Yeah, ancient aliens came down with their spaceships. You know, but you, but even if you believe that, you know, and you mention, well, you know, uh, you can mention, well, you know, I believe the Bible and God and this and that and the other, and they'll say, well, where did God come from? And my question is, I don't know. Um, I suppose he always existed. But then you ask him the same question. Well, where did the UFOs came from that came down here and, you know, seeded us and put mankind on the earth or whatever, or came down and helped build these pyramids or what have you? I mean, you know, even if it was aliens, where did they come from? And, you know, it takes just as much faith to believe in aliens and UFOs, uh, which are devils, than it does to believe in God and evolution, or, or evolution, I should say, not and. But I mean, some of these 
some of these blocks, they're huge. And, you know, the thing is with these pyramids, uh, like the Great Pyramid in, in Egypt, the capstone, uh, the capstone is the very, very, very top stone. It's missing. It's not on there. They never put the, the tops on, you know, it's not a, um, it's flat. It it's, doesn't have a point. So, in the Bible, Jesus is called the cornerstone. Now, let's take a look at that real quick. Now, when you're building a building, you start at a corner. You don't start in the middle. You don't start at the top. You start at the corner. Because you've got the corner, you've got two 90 degree angles. Let's say you've got a building that perfectly faces northeast, south, and west. Well, you're going to have one cornerstone that's going to have the wall that you're starting facing north and south and then the east and west. And then you, you're trying to make the thing square and you don't want it to be lopsided. Okay, and that's when the uh, Masonic Lodge, which is a, a basically Judaism for Gentiles group, uh, they like to have a big ceremony when they're dedicating a building and they set the cornerstone. Well, the cornerstone was very, very important because if it was straight and square, then the rest of the building, there was a good chance that the rest of the building would be uh, straight and square. But if the cornerstone was off, well, then the rest of the building would be off. So the cornerstone was very, very important. And if you've worked construction, you understand what I'm saying. But if you don't, you know, you could do a little research on it. But the, the, the first stone that you lay down is the cornerstone. Well, guess what? When Jesus spoke in his parables, he used construction terms, he used farming terms, he used shepherding terms so that the people would understand and be able to take a heavenly meaning that was alluded to as something, an earthly, how do you say, uh, he took an earthly example and gave it a heavenly meaning so that the people would understand the simple people believed. Uh, those that had their great educations and doctorates, for the most part, they rejected Christ. So, when Jesus was uh, speaking, let's take a look. Now, people will tell you that Paul is a false apostle. And... Personally, when I hear people say that, I think God has deceived them. Because look at what Paul wrote to the Ephesians. Ephesus was a church in Greece. Paul probably wrote this in Greek to the church that was in Greece at Ephesus. And it's the book of Ephesians. Chapter 2, verse, let's start in verse 18. Ephesians 2, verse 18. For through him, who? For through Jesus. For through him, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. What spirit? The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ. 19. Now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the foundation, when you build a house, you got to have a foundation. Okay, that's, that's, ladies, that's your floor. That's your foundation. Foundation has to be strong because when you take bricks and put a wall on it, that's a lot of weight. The foundation's got to be strong. Uh, you know, guys that build, we get this. Uh, I did construction for a couple years. Not that I'm 
I was not any great at it. I mean, I was okay, I guess, but, you know, but I understand the concepts. You know, a foundation has to be strong to support the weight of the walls. If it's not, the wall will come, come, trunk, come crumbling down on your head with a roof and you die. So you better have a strong foundation. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. And that's, that's, that's who I want to be a household with. Verse 20. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief corner stone. Did you get that? Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone of the building. The apostles and the prophets are the foundation. Verse 21. In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. You see, those that are born again of the Spirit, that are truly His, are the temple of God. And you got a bunch of Israelis that call themselves Jews over in the Middle East, and they want to build the temple for their Messiah, which the Bible calls the man of sin, the beast, the son of perdition, the Antichrist. And you know what's interesting? Is the Babylonians invaded and destroyed, well, they invaded Jerusalem, and they destroyed the temple on a certain day. And then years later, 70 years later approximately, the uh, king Cyrus and Darius allowed the true Judah to go back from Bab Babylon back to Jerusalem, and they rebuilt the temple. Well, then Christ came, was crucified, buried, raised uh, raised again on the third day. And then about 30-something years later, approximately, the um, there was a rebellion in Jerusalem against by those that called themselves Jews against the Romans. Well, the Roman legions came and totally and utterly destroyed Jerusalem and the temple. And guess what? The Romans and the Babylonians both destroy the temple on the same exact date. How's that a message for the Jews? Oh yeah. Now those of you that are interested, I have a series on The Rock uh, on YouTube. I'm also on what was real video, real dot video, but which is now Bright Eon. And uh, I'm also on BitChute but, and Minds, but uh, I'm kind of getting away from them. But uh, I did a, an entire series on Jesus Christ being the rock. All right, so in 1 Peter, if you're interested, you know, 1 Peter chapter 2, starting in verse 5, Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Verse 6, Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is the head of the corner. Now, who? guess what? The people that built the temple in the day of Christ... They rejected the stone. They were the builders that rejected that stone. 
But that stone that they rejected is, the, is going to be the head of the corner. Verse 8. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being, diso being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. And what are they appointed unto? Wrath. They're, you know... Pfft. Now, in Matthew 21, verse 42, Jesus saith unto them, now he's speaking to the Jews, did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner? This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. See, Christ is the cornerstone. Now, in some modern Bibles, they if you don't use the King James or the Geneva, some of the modern Bibles change cornerstone and use the word capstone. And the word capstone refers to the 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 very, very top, you know, you've heard of wearing a cap on top of your head. Well, they change cornerstone to capstone. I mean, that's the top stone on the pyramid. And a lot of these pyramids are flat on top. They don't have the top capstone. And that's what they're talking about. So they change the cornerstone, which is Christ, to the capstone. And if you don't know what a capstone is, take out, go get your purse, go get your wallet, and pull a dollar bill out. All right, take a look at a dollar bill. Turn it to the back. Look on the left-hand side. See that pyramid? You see at the very top of that pyramid? You got a triangle, which is a capstone, with an eye in it, the all seeing eye. And uh, of course, the Masonic Lodge will try to tell you that that's God. Uh, well, <laughs> maybe the God of this world, but that's not the God of the Bible. Take a look at the Israeli flag. What do you got? You got a, two triangles, a six pointed star. It's a triangle pointing up. It's a triangle pointing down. Do you know the witches say, uh, as above, so below? Or so below, as above? I don't, I don't remember exactly if it's which way it goes. But, uh, you know, they want to make it as it is on earth, make it in, in heaven. Remember in one of, my pre uh, one of the previous series here, I mentioned about the war in heaven. Oh, yeah. You know, the pyramid is satanic. Personally, I believe that these pyramids were built for the worship of the devil. And that's my, that's, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So guess what? Your money is satanic. Did you know that? Now, when you look at some of these pyramids, especially like down in Mexico, they have sculptures of dragons. And, <laughs> and they worshipped the sun. No, not the S-O-N, not the Son of God, not Christ. No, 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 no. They worship the S-U-N, the sun in the sky. Well, who is... The sun, God. In Egypt, they called him Ra, R-A. Well, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, we read in verse 13, For such are false apostles, false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, 
And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers are also transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Oh, yeah. I believe that all these structures were created for the worship of the devil. I mean, let's face it, people. These structures are all over the world. They are finding pyramids in the middle of the jungles of South America, where they've probably been for maybe hundreds, maybe thousands of years. I don't know. Some people, scholars, I should say, believe that some of these pyramids were built prior to the flood. Others say they were built after. Maybe it's both. Uh, I don't know. Because I don't know. However, I believe that the fallen angels used some kind of technology that we don't have today to build these things. I mean, like I've mentioned, that, that stone in Baalbek in Lebanon, that thing is larger than any ship that's ever been built, to my knowledge. And we don't have a crane that could pick that thing up, and yet there it is on a wall, about six feet above the ground. Who, who picked that thing up and put it there? Uh, you know, it's just, you know, and they want us to believe that ancient man was primitive and, you know, you just, you had a, a hundred thousand guys walking around, picking these things up and putting them up there. I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I think the fallen angels were using some kind of technology and, and guess what, people? God, the Father, and his son, Christ, Jesus, decided, you know, these ancient peoples were worshiping the devil. So, you notice they don't really exist anymore. All these civilizations collapsed. They disappeared. They're gone. Why? Well, just like Sodom and Gomorrah, right? Well, in Luke chapter 17 and verse 29, But the same day that Lot went out from Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. I mean, you've got these huge pyramid things all over the world. I mean, incredible technology that put these things together. And the civilizations are gone. Because, you know, they didn't worship the God of heaven. They worshiped the devil. So, you know, if a civilization exists and they don't honor the God of the scriptures, they're not going to exist long. One day the Lord will just say, oh, that's it. Fire and brimstone or whatever. And you got to understand something. The Aztecs, the Mayans, and the Incas, they were in Mexico and South America, and they built a lot of these types of pyramid things. Do you know that the Aztecs, according to the Spaniards, did human sacrifice and cannibalism? Where was their capital? Mexico City is the lo present, uh, present location of the Aztec Empire's capital. And these people did cannibalism, human sacrifice. And guess what? This is what is being pushed by those that want open borders. They want them here in the United States. Do you really want the descendants of people that did human sacrifice and cannibalism in the United States? I mean, really? Uh, take a look at the Flood of the Dragon. Look up 
Revelation 12, Flood of the Dragon on YouTube and see if my name pops up. I think it was a three-part series. You'll have to forgive me. I've got, I have over 600 and something Bible studies that I've done. And it's hard for me to remember which one is which. I mean, I've been on YouTube for, oh, nine years now. How long will I continue to be on there? I don't know. But, you know, take a look at Reel.Video, which is now Bright Eon. So, so, what can I tell you? All right, let's take a look at Genesis 11. Because we're getting ready to close this out. Genesis 11, verse 1. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one, uh, one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower. A pyramid? A tower? I don't know. Whose top may reach unto heaven? Oh yeah, building their stairway to heaven. And let us make a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole, whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they all have one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of the earth. Huh. Now you got to realize, people. Uh, verse 10. These are the generations of Shem. Shem was the chosen uh, seed line. Shem was an hundred years old and begat Arphaxad two years after the flood. And Shem lived after he begat Arphaxad five hundred years and begat sons and daughters. So, how much knowledge can you gain in five hundred years? A bunch. A bunch. I mean, you could get one hundred bachelor's degrees, four years of college, you could go to college 100 times and earn 100 bachelor's degrees in 500 years. Easily. Easily. So, were these people a bunch of stupid, uneducated morons that are, and, and were, because of evolution, were constantly getting better and smarter? I don't think so. I bet you these people were smarter than we are, or at least had more knowledge, I should say. So, I think I'm going to close this out. You can take a look at the pictures and realize that on a lot of these, especially the Mexican pyramids, uh, they have serpents or dragon carvings. Uh, who's the serpent? Take a guess. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. Ah, so the dragon and the old serpent. And the great dragon was cast out. Cast out of where? Heaven. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So, you know, Satan wants worship. Let's take a look at Matthew chapter 4. Okay. Uh, verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, Command that these stones be made bread. But he, Jesus, but he answered and said, It is written, 
See, that's a good thing, people. When when the devil and his angels come to tempt you, it is good to answer them with Scripture. It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, oh, Satan's quoting scripture here. If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands shall they bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. You see, Satan quotes scriptures too, but he misapplies it. Verse 7. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain. Oh yeah, they like to be up high. And showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, which uh, probably paled in comparison to heaven where Jesus came from, right? Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Huh. Wow, Satan wanted Jesus to fall down and worship him? Verse 10, Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. You see, people, Satan wants worship. Why were these pyramids and what have you built? Simple. They, these people were uh, worshiping the devil. And that's why they don't exist anymore. God destroyed them. And now we're going to have, uh, uh, we've got millions of the descendants of the Aztecs flooding the southern border of the United States coming here. Millions of them illegally. You know, there was a senator, I don't remember his name, but he did a study and he said that on average, 30 U.S. citizens every day died from either outright murder or were killed by um, illegals in this country. Most of, many of them were Mexicans. Uh, from crime, outright murdered, 30 a day. And when they, do, when they start looking into the hit and runs accidents they find out that uh, they're they're here illegally they don't they don't care if they run because they're going to you know if they stuck around for the accident they're going to be deported they're worried about you know they're drunk uh the cars have no insurance um you know they buy a, a you know cheap car five hundred dollars thousand dollar car they drive around with no insurance they get in an accident they abandon it they leave and they get drunk, drunk driving, and smash into your family. They don't care. They run. And, you know, they were finding out that in, uh, I don't know about you, but I live in South Florida, but uh, the I've had police tell me that uh, over half the hit and runs that they do solve are illegals. Over half. And... Sometimes they deport them and then they come back and then they have the same thing happen again. You know, this is the uh, this is what the open borders people want. The flood of the dragon, people. Revelation twelve. Look it up. Um, look look me up. Revelation twelve. The flood of the dragon. I think it's a three part series. So yeah, this is what we. Uh, this is what happens when the United States and God's people no longer honor the Lord Jesus Christ. 
this is what happens. So, all right, well, the next part on this series is going to be on space flight or uh, airplanes, air, you know, maybe not space flight, maybe not like outer space, like Star Trek or whatever, Star Wars or whatever. But um, I hope you'll take a look at it. The, um, they found, archaeologists found what looked like, uh, they didn't know what it was, but it, it looked kind of like a modern day airplane. And, but they found it before the Wright brothers had flown an airplane and they put it in a museum. And it wasn't until monoplanes, one winged airplanes were flying around that somebody looked at this and said, my God, that looks like an airplane. I mean, you know, did they have, were they flying, were the fallen angels flying around in airplanes thousands of years ago? I don't know. You know, there's nothing in the Bible that says that all angels can fly. And there's nothing in the Bible that says all angels can't fly. I, at least I don't know of it. Maybe you guys do. And if you do, I'd appreciate it if you post it in the comments. I'd be interested. But, uh, you know, maybe uh, maybe uh, somebody was flying around. I don't know. Mankind, angels, I don't know. But uh, they tried to say it was a bird. But... Uh, I don't know if you know what a rudder is. A rudder uh, is a vertical structure on the back of a plane or a ship. When you look at an airplane, it's the, the tail that sticks straight up in the air. On a ship, it sticks straight down. It's behind the propellers and it helps the ship turn left or right. Well, it does the same thing. Uh, vertical means up and down where it's horizontal is flat, like the horizon. And, you know, they tried to say, well, you know, that's some kind of a bird. But the thing is, there's no birds that have rudders. And then they say, well, you know, it's a fish. Yeah, but fish don't have wings like that. I mean, they got little dorsal fins, but they don't have, well, maybe a flying fish. But uh, I don't know. So did they have space, space flight or airplanes back, back in the old days? I don't know. Stick around, find out. The Bible even talks about it. So that'll be my next study. All right, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus, who is the Christ, in his precious name. Amen.